Chapter 4 Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. For forty days, being tempted by the devil, he ate nothing in those days. Afterward, when they were completed, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil, leading him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I want. If you therefore will worship before me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. He led him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from here. For it is written, He will put His angels in charge of you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest perhaps you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answering, said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. When the devil had completed every temptation, he departed from him until another time. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and news about Him spread through all the surrounding area. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. He came to Nazareth, where He had been brought up. He entered, as was his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. The book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to deliver those who are crushed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to tell them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All testified about him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Isn't this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will tell me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done at Capernaum, do also here in your hometown. He said, Most certainly, I tell you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But truly, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was shut up three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land. Elijah was sent to none of them, except to Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. There were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, except Naaman, the Syrian. They were all filled with wrath in the synagogue as they heard these things. They rose up, threw him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill that their city was built on that they might throw him off the cliff, that he, passing through the middle of them, went his way. He came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. He was teaching them on the Sabbath day, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. In the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Um, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down in the middle of them, he came out of him, having done him no harm. Amazement came on all, and they spoke together, one with another, saying, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. News about him went out into every place of the surrounding region. He rose up from the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a great fever, and they begged him to help her. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she rose up and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and healed them. Demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. Rebuking them, he didn't allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. When it was day, he departed and went into an uninhabited place, and the multitudes looked for him, and came to him, and held on to him, so that he wouldn't go away from them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of God's kingdom to the other cities also. For this reason I have been sent. He was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Chapter 5 Now while the multitude pressed on him and heard the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. He sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we worked all night and caught nothing, but at your word I will let down the net. When they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish, and their net was breaking. He beckoned to their partners in the other boat, that they should come and help them. They came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But Simon Peter, when he saw it, fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. For he was amazed, and all who were with him, at the catch of fish which they had caught. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. 
Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people alive. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. While he was in one of the cities, behold, there was a man full of leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I want to. He made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. He commanded him to tell no one, but go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing according to what Moses commanded for a testimony to them. That the report concerning him spread much more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. That he withdrew himself into the desert and prayed. On one of those days he was teaching, and there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by him that come out of every village of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was with him to heal them. Behold, men brought a paralyzed man on a cot, and they sought to bring him in to lay before Jesus. Not finding a way to bring him in because of the multitude, they went up to the housetop and let him down through the tiles with his cat into the middle before Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, answered them, Why are you reasoning so in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, Arise, take up your cot, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, and took up that which he was laying on, and departed to his house, glorifying God. Amazement took hold on all, and they glorified God. They were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. After these things he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office, and said to him, Follow me. He left everything and rose up and followed him. Levi made a great feast for him in his house. Here was a great crowd of tax collectors and others who were reclining with them. Their scribes and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, Those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. He said to him, Why do John's disciples often fast and pray, likewise also the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? He said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and they will fast in those days. He also told the parable to them, no one puts a piece from a new garment on an old garment, or else he will tear the new, and also the piece from the new will not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wine skins, or else the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. That new wine must be put into fresh wine skins, and both are preserved. No man having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says, the old is better. Luke chapter 6 Now on the second Sabbath after the first, he was going through the grain fields. His disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate, rubbing them in their hands. That some of the Pharisees said to them, Why do you do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? Jesus, answering them, said, Haven't you read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered into God's house, and took and ate the showbread, and gave also to those who were with him, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests alone. He said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. It also happened on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. There was a man there, and his right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. That he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man who had the withered hand, Rise up and stand in the middle. He arose and stood. Then Jesus said to them, I will ask you something. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? He looked around at them all and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did, and his hand was restored as sound as the other. But they were filled with rage and talked with one another about what they might do to Jesus. In these days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. When it was day, he called his disciples, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were troubled by unclean spirits, and they were being healed. All the multitude sought to touch him, for power came out of him and healed them all. He lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for God's kingdom is yours. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. 
Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude and mock you, and throw out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For their fathers did the same thing to the prophets, that will to you who are rich. For you have received your consolation. Woe to you, you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe, when men speak well of you, for their fathers did the same thing to the false prophets. But I tell you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer also the other, and from him who takes away your cloak, don't withhold your coat also. Give to everyone who asks you, and don't ask him who takes away your goods to give them back again. As you would like people to do to you, do exactly so to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive back as much. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing back, and your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind toward the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, even as your Father is also merciful. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Set free, and you will be set free. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be given to you. For with the same measure you measure, it will be measured back to you. He spoke a parable to them. Can the blind guide the blind? Won't they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how can you tell your brother, brother, let me remove the speck of chaff that is in your eye, when you yourself don't see the beam that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first remove the beam from your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For people don't gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings out that which is good, and the evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings out that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks, Why do you call me, Lord, Lord, and don't do the things which I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you who he is like. He is like a man building a house, who dug and went deep and laid a foundation on the rock. When a flood arose, the stream broke against the house and could not shake it, because it was founded on the rock. A he who hears and doesn't do is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream broke, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Chapter 7 After he had finished speaking in the hearing of the people, he entered into Capernaum. A certain centurion's servant, who was dear to him, was sick and at the point of death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and save his servant. When they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying, He is worthy for you to do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he built our synagogue for us. Jesus went with them. When he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Therefore I didn't even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having under myself soldiers. I tell this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come. And he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned and said to the multitude who followed him, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. Those who were sent, returning to the house, found that the servant who had been sick was well. Soon afterwards, he went to a city called Maine. Many of his disciples, along with a great multitude, went with him. Now when he came near to the gate of the city, behold, one who was dead was carried out the only born son of his mother, and she was a widow. Many people of the city were with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Don't cry. He came near and touched the coffin, and the bearer stood still. He said, Young man, I tell you, arise. He who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Fear took hold of all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. This report went out concerning him in the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding region. The disciples of John told him about all these things. John, calling to himself two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the one who is coming, or should we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the baptizer has sent us to you, saying, Are you he who comes, or should we look for another? In that hour he cured many of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and to many who were blind he gave sight. Jesus answered them, Go and tell John the things which you have seen and heard that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is he who finds no occasion for stumbling in me.
When John's messengers had departed, he began to tell the multitudes about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. And what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft clothing. Behold, those who are gorgeously dressed and live delicately are in king's courts. And what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. For I tell you, among those who are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the baptizer. Yet he who is least in God's kingdom is greater than he. When all the people and the tax collectors heard this, they declared God to be just, having been baptized with John's baptism. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God, not being baptized by him themselves. To what then should I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another, saying, We piped to you, and you didn't dance. We mourned, and you didn't weep. For John the baptizer came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Wisdom is justified by all her children. One of the Pharisees invited him to eat with him. He entered into the Pharisee's house and sat at the table. Behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that he was reclining in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. Standing behind at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with the hair of her head, kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, This man, if he were a prophet, would have perceived who and what kind of woman this is who touches him, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. He said, Teacher, say on. A certain lender had two debtors, the one owed five hundred denarii and the other fifty. When they couldn't pay, he forgave them both. Which of them therefore will love him most? Simon answered, He, I suppose, to whom he forgave the most. He said to him, You have judged correctly. Turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered into your house, and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. The one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Luke chapter 8 Soon afterwards he went about through cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good news of God's kingdom. With him were the twelve, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chooses, Herod, Stuart, Susanna, and many others who served them from their possessions. When a great multitude came together and people from every city were coming to him, he spoke by a parable. The farmer went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell along the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky devoured it. Other seed fell on the rock, and as soon as it grew, it withered away, because it had no moisture. Other fell amid the thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Other fell into the good ground and grew, and produced one hundred times as much fruit. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him, What does this parable mean? He said, To you it is given to know the mysteries of God's kingdom, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those along the road are those who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are they who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, that these have no root. They believe for a while, then fall away in time of temptation. What fell among the thorns, these are those who have heard, and as they go on their way they are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and they bring no fruit to maturity. Those in the good ground, these are those who with an honest and good heart, having heard the word, hold it tightly, and produce fruit with perseverance. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a container or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand, that those who enter and may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, nor anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Be careful therefore how you hear. For whoever has, to him will be given, and whoever doesn't have, from him will be taken away even that which he thinks he has. His mother and brothers came to him, and they could not come near him for the crowd. Some people told him, Your mother and your brothers stand outside, desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Now on one of those days he entered into a boat, himself and his disciples, and he said to them, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. A windstorm came down on the lake.
lake, and they were taking on dangerous amounts of water. They came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are dying. He awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. Then they ceased, and it was calm. He said to them, Where is your fate? Being afraid, they marveled, saying to one another, Who is this then, that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. Then they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, a certain man out of the city who had demons for a long time met him. He wore no clothes and didn't live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What do I have to do with you? Jesus, you son of the Most High God, I beg you, don't torment me. For Jesus was commanding the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For the unclean spirit had often seized the man. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and fetters. Breaking the bonds apart, he was driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus asked them, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered into him. They begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now there was there a herd of many pigs feeding on the mountain, and they begged him that he would allow them to enter into those. Then he allowed them. The demons came out of the man and entered into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. People went out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who saw it told them how he who had been possessed by demons was healed. All the people of the surrounding country of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were very much afraid. Then he entered into the boat and returned. But the man from whom the demons had gone out begged him that he might go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your house, and declare what great things God has done for you. He went his way, proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. When Jesus returned, the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Behold, a man named Jairus came. He was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come into his house, for he had an only born daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes pressed against him. A woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had spent all her living on physicians and could not be healed by any, came behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. Immediately the flow of her blood stopped. Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes press and jostle you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I perceive that power has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. He said to her, Daughter, cheer up, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he still spoke, one from the ruler of the synagogue's house came, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the teacher. But Jesus, hearing it, answered him, Don't be afraid. Only believe, and she will be healed. When he came to the house, he didn't allow anyone to enter in, except Peter, John, James, the father of the child, and her mother. All were weeping and mourning her, but he said, Don't weep. She isn't dead, but sleeping. They were ridiculing him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, and taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise. Her spirit returned, and she rose up immediately. He commanded that something be given to her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he commanded them to tell no one what had been done.